Lion's Mane is a gourmet edible mushroom that's been used as a food and medicine by numerous indigenous cultures around the world for centuries. Now, the Herisium genus is part of a group of hydnoid or hydnoid fungi that bear spore-producing spines on the outside of the fruiting body, and the reason that they do this is to maximize on surface area so that they can fully optimize their reproductive capacity. Now, many of them look kind of like icicles or a frozen waterfall, and obviously they look like a lion's mane. So these are parasitic fungi that grow mostly on hardwood trees during late summer and autumn throughout the northern hemisphere. And although all species within this genus are pretty much all delicious edibles, the species Herisium erinaceus has been most widely researched and provides the most impressive number of bioactive compounds and all of the associated health benefits. Traditional Chinese medicine used lion's mane as a tonic for the stomach for treating gastric ulcers and gastrointestinal cancer, as well as for strengthening the immune system in general. And because it tastes so good, it's been a really popular food throughout China and Japan, North America and Europe for a very long time. And now with the development of scientific technology, we can really begin to take a look inside this mushroom and start to understand it from the perspective of chemistry, which is an exploration that has proven to be most enlightening. So firstly, the traditional use of this mushroom is totally supported by scientific inquiry because we now know that lion's mane contains a number of water-soluble compounds that protect the mucosal lining of the stomach and inhibit the development of gastric ulcers. It's a rich source of complex polysaccharides, or more specifically beta-glucans, that provide a lot of this gastrointestinal benefit, as well as supporting the immune system. A number of compounds in this mushroom, both polysaccharides and terpenes, have shown anti-tumor effects against cancer of the GI tract, as well as hepatoma cells within the liver. Lion's mane also has significant antioxidant activity within the body, and it's known to modulate insulin secretion, regulating levels of both glucose and lipids within the blood, which has led to it being a recommended natural option in the treatment of diabetes. What's most fascinating about this mushroom, though, and what's currently the main focus of all of the research, is the large assortment of compounds that stimulate the production of nerve growth factor within the body. Now, nerve growth factors are proteins that are largely responsible for the development, maintenance, repair, and survival of nerve cells within the peripheral and central nervous systems. Nerve growth factor was first discovered in the middle of the 20th century, and the scientists involved in that discovery won the Nobel Prize for their contribution to medicine three decades later in 1986. We now know that nerve growth factor is a crucially important component in both gross and fine motor skills, so how we move and function physically, as well as cognitive behavior like problem-solving skills and how we form and retain memories, how we respond to and recover from stress, as well as the repair of neurological damage from injury and surgery. Chronic stress not only damages the integrity of healthy nerves, but it can also significantly lower the production of nerve growth factor, which is going to further inhibit the repair process. Plus, as we age, as we advance past middle age and into our later years, there is a general reduction in our ability to produce nerve growth factor. So a decline in nerve growth factor is closely associated with degenerative neurological conditions that are synonymous with old age, like Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia, plus conditions like multiple sclerosis, which can obviously affect people that are much younger. There's been a lot of in vitro and animal studies on lion's mane and its ability to regenerate nerve cells and the myelin sheath that surrounds and protects the nerves. And there's an increasing number of in vivo human trials as well, which are really aimed at discerning exactly how lion's mane functions within human subjects. And so far, 
All of this collective research has shown that lion's mane is actually very effective with no known toxicity. In vitro studies have shown that extracts of lion's mane significantly speed up the repair process of axons, dendrites, and myelin within the nerve cells and inhibit apoptosis, which is the programmed destruction of damaged nerves. So this really allows the recovery of nerves that are not yet beyond repair, and that's going to further help to prevent neurological connections from being severed. Lion's mane extracts have also shown to improve the growth rate of new nerve cells and the development of synapses, enabling nerves to communicate between each other much more effectively. And because lion's mane supports the development and maintenance of healthy myelin, it can really help to safeguard these connections from breaking down in the first place. One particular focus of this research has been the effect that lion's mane extracts have on the hippocampus, an area of the brain that forms an important part of the limbic system, helping us to regulate our emotions and really plays a fundamental role in our memory retention. In vivo research has shown that consistent use of lion's mane in a dose-dependent manner can promote neurogenesis within the hippocampus, which has not only improved the memories of test subjects, but also the emotional state. Long-term use of lion's mane has shown significant anxiolytic or anti-anxiety and antidepressant effects as well. This also reflects the Tibetan medical perspective as well, because it's said that there are approximately 72,000 channels or meridians within the human body, and one branch of these subtle channels is called the tsaka, or white channels, and these relate to the nervous system of the body. These channels are believed to transport the wind energy throughout the body and mind, which is a concept very similar to qi or prana from the Chinese and Ayurvedic medical systems. Now, these nerve channels require insulation of the earth and water elements in order to function properly, which would relate to the fatty myelin that surrounds and protects the nerve cells. So, if the channels become damaged or broken, the wind energy can no longer circulate properly, which can lead to psychological problems, emotional issues, memory loss, as well as a general decline in motor function. So from the perspective of Tibetan medicine, lion's mane is a restorative substance that can repair the damage to these white channels and reduce the collateral damage that can accumulate from an excess of this wind-like energy that travels throughout the meridian systems. But the structural and functional similarities between the human nervous system and fungal mycelium should also be acknowledged here, because the two are basically identical in almost every way. It's just that one is the domain of the human organism, and the other is the domain of the fungal kingdom. Yet fungi share considerably more DNA with humans and animals than they do with plants. So, you know, it really just makes complete sense that some species of mushroom are going to be capable of regenerating the human nervous system in much the same way as they develop and maintain their own mycelial networks in nature. So research into lion's mane is ongoing, but it clearly does contain a variety of compounds that could prevent as well as treat neurological damage and diseases, many of which are increasingly more common in the world today. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube, then I'll provide some links in the description below the video to specific research on the neurological benefits of lion's mane and the compounds specifically responsible for these benefits. But what are these compounds? Well, there are two main groups of chemicals called hericinones and irinocenes both of which are directly responsible for stimulating nerve growth factor within the body. Now, there are, of course, numerous cofactors and accessory nutrients that do play a role, but without the presence of these two main groups of bioactive compounds, there won't be any nerve regeneration whatsoever. 
all of the different Harissanones and Renesines, of which there are many, are either terpenes or terpene-bound polyphenols, which means that they have low to no solubility in water, but they are fully soluble in alcohol. And this is a very important point that we will explore more in a moment. Harissanones are found almost exclusively in the fruiting body of the mushroom, whereas nearly all of the arenosines are found within the mycelium. So this means that if we're going to take a lion's mane extract or a supplement of some kind for the specific purpose of it benefiting the nervous system, then that product must contain an alcohol extract of either the fruiting body or the mycelium, or ideally both of them combined. Now, the water-soluble compounds in lion's mane, the polysaccharides and the beta-glucans, while these are excellent for the immunological and gastrointestinal benefits that we mentioned earlier, they don't stimulate the production of nerve growth factor, and alcohol extraction is mandatory in order to achieve that. All we need to do is look at the chemical nature of the harissanones and the arenosines in lion's mane, understand that they are terpenoid compounds that are largely soluble in alcohol, and that all of the research into these compounds and their ability to stimulate nerve growth factor has been performed using alcohol-based extracts of lion's mane. So the terpenes are critically important, and without them, nerve growth factor will be unaffected. But because the indigenous use of this mushroom wasn't really focused on the neurological benefits, it's led to many products and extracts being produced in a way that echoes traditional methods, but it doesn't really honour the more recent discovery of lion's mane's ability to stimulate nerve growth factor. So the industrial preparation methods and the marketing don't always reflect one another. So if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them down below. And as always, thanks so much for watching, take it easy, and I'll see you again soon.